Ah, priestess, we're so glad you're here, Nana said, relief etched on his face. We were starting to think you'd abandoned us. The priestess's smile faded, replaced by a stern expression. You should be glad I'm here, considering your foolishness. You were instructed to stay together and follow my guidance, but you disobeyed. And now, look what's happened. Amika's brow furrowed in concern. But priestess, we... No excuses, Emika. The priestess interrupted, her voice stern. Your disobedience led to the other's death. If you had listened, he would still be alive. Nana's eyes dropped in shame. We're sorry, priestess. We were wrong to disobey. The priestess's expression softened slightly. I know you are, Nana, but sorry is not enough. You must learn to listen and follow instructions. Oke's okay death was an unnecessary tragedy. Emika nodded, his eyes downcast. We understand, priestess. We'll do better. The priestess sighed. See that you do. Now let us proceed. You still have a quest to complete. But we're not out of the woods yet, Chukwudi said, his brow furrowed with concern. We still have to find the golden feather. Ah, yes, the priestess said, her expression turning serious. The golden feather. Well, that's where things get really challenging. What do you mean? Oke okay asked, his voice laced with trepidation. The golden feather is guarded by a fearsome creature, the priestess replied, her voice dripping with drama. A creature so terrifying, it'll make your worst nightmares seem like a walk in the park. The group exchanged nervous glances. What kind of creature? Nana asked, his voice barely above a whisper. The priestess grinned mischievously. Ah, that's for me to know and you to find out. But don't worry, I'll give you a hint. It's something you'd least expect. How can we face this creature? Chukwudi asked, his eyes wide with fear. The priestess produced a sword and handed it to each of them. You will encounter dangers on your way, but stay together and use these swords to defend yourselves. And remember, the creature is not what you expect. Are you sure we can do this? Emeka asked, his voice trembling. The priestess nodded. I have faith in you. You have made it this far, and I know you can overcome any obstacle. Just stay together and trust in yourselves. With that, the priestess vanished, leaving the group staring at each other in confusion and fear. What kind of creature could be so terrifying, and how would they ever defeat it? Only time would tell. Let's get moving, Nana said, his voice firm. We have a golden feather to find. The group nodded and set off, their hearts pounding with anticipation and fear. As they journeyed deeper into the forest, the group encountered strange and ominous signs. The trees seemed to twist and writhe, their branches like grasping fingers. The air grew thick with an eerie, unnatural silence. Suddenly, a faint rustling echoed through the underbrush. The group froze, their hearts pounding in unison. What was that? Oke okay whispered, his eyes scanning the surroundings. Nana shook his head. I don't know, but let's be prepared. As they readied themselves, a creature emerged from the shadows. Its body was like a lion's, but its skin was a mass of writhing, pulsing tendrils. Its eyes glowed with an otherworldly light. By the gods, Emeka breathed. What is that thing? The creature began to circle them, its tendrils reaching out like tentacles. The group stood firm, their weapons at the ready. We need to work together, Nana said, his voice steady. We can't let it surround us. With a fierce battle cry, the group charged forward, their weapons clashing with the creature's tendrils. The fight was intense, the creature's tendrils snapping and whipping with deadly precision. But the group held their ground, their bond and determination driving them forward. Slowly they pushed the creature back, their weapons striking true. As they fought with the creature, Oke okay tried to strike it with his spear, but the creature was too quick and managed to dodge the attack. The creature then counterattacked, its tendrils wrapping around Oke's waist, pulling him close. No, Imeka shouted, trying to save his friend, but it was too late. The creature's tendrils tightened, and Oke's scream was cut short as his body was squeezed lifeless. The group was in shock, their friend and companion gone in an instant. No, Emeka wailed, his eyes filled with tears. Oke, no. The group fought on, fueled by rage and grief, but the creature was too powerful. Just when it seemed like all was lost, Nana remembered the seven seas water and used it to weaken the creature. 
With renewed strength, the group launched a fierce attack, determined to avenge Oke's death. Finally, after what seemed like an eternity, the creature dissipated into nothingness. Panting and exhausted, the group stood victorious, but at great cost. Oke was gone, and they hadn't even gotten the golden feather yet. We must keep going, Nana said, his voice heavy with sorrow. We owe it to Oke to complete our quest. The group nodded in agreement, their hearts heavy with grief, but determined to see their quest through to the end. They took a deep breath and continued on their journey, ready to face whatever challenges lay ahead. As they trudged wearily through the dense forest, the group's exhaustion was palpable. The trees seemed to close in around them, their branches tangling together in a canopy of darkness. The air was heavy with the scent of damp earth and decaying leaves. Every step was a struggle, their legs aching from the relentless pace. Suddenly, a faint light appeared in the distance, piercing the gloom. The group's eyes fixed on the lonely hut, nestled in the heart of the forest. I think we're there, Chukwudi said, his voice laced with hope. Nana hesitated, her eyes narrowing. I'm not so sure. Why not? Emeka asked, his brow furrowed. It's the only hut in the forest. I say we should try it out. Nana's expression was skeptical. I don't know. It looks abandoned. And what if it's a trap? Emeka's face set in determination. We've come too far to turn back now. Let's at least check it out. After a brief moment of hesitation, Nena nodded in agreement. Okay, let's do it. As they approached the hut, the trees seemed to loom over them, casting long, ominous shadows on the ground. The hut itself was small, its wooden walls weathered to a soft, silvery grey. The roof was a tangle of curved tiles, covered in moss and lichen. As they pushed open the creaking door, a warm golden light spilled out, bathing them in its radiance. The group hesitated, their eyes adjusting slowly to the sudden brightness. As they entered the hut, they were immediately struck by the overwhelming stench and eerie atmosphere. The air was thick with the scent of decay, and the walls seemed to writhe with strange pulsing tendrils. Ugh, what is this place? Amika gagged, covering his nose. Nana shook his head. I don't know, but I don't like it. Let's just find the golden feather and get out of here. Chukwudi nodded in agreement. Yeah, this place is seriously creepy. Obina, however, seemed drawn to a large cobweb-covered basket in the corner of the hut. Guys, come check this out, he called, his voice barely above a whisper. As they approached the basket, they noticed that it was emitting a faint hum and the cobwebs seemed to be pulsing with a strange energy. The door creaked shut behind them and they heard a faint click, as if the hut had been locked from the outside. Uh, guys, Amika said, his voice trembling. I think we're trapped. Nana frowned. Don't worry, we'll find a way out. Let's just focus on finding the golden feather. But as they examined the basket, they realized that it was locked with a strange glowing mechanism. This is weird, Amika said, her brow furrowed. I've never seen anything like this. Nana hesitated. I don't know, but I think we should be careful. This feels like a trap. But Emeka was undeterred. He reached out and touched the mechanism, and the basket opened with a small creak. Inside, they saw the golden feather nestled in a bed of soft, glowing material. Yes, Chukwudi exclaimed, his eyes shining with excitement. We did it. But as Emeka reached for the feather, a sudden burst of energy exploded from the basket, enveloping him in a blinding light. Obina! Nana shouted, but it was too late. When the light faded, Emeka was gone, leaving behind only a faint whisper of his name. The remaining three friends stared at each other in horror, realizing too late that the priestess's warning had been genuine. They had underestimated the power of the golden feather, and now they had lost one of their own. We have to get out of here, Chukwudi said, his voice trembling. Now. But as they turned to leave, the door slammed shut behind them, and a fierce wind began to howl, whipping through the hut with an otherworldly shriek. The group huddled together in terror, their hearts racing with fear. This is all your fault, Nana, Chukwudi wailed, his voice trembling. If you had just listened to the priestess, we wouldn't be in this mess. I knew we shouldn't have come here. Chukwudi cried, his eyes streaming with tears. We're going to die, just like Emeka. Shut up, Nana shouted, his face pale with fear. 
We have to find a way out of here, not blame each other. But as they frantically searched for an exit, the wind grew stronger, threatening to rip the hut apart. The group clung to each other, their screams drowned out by the cacophony of sounds. If I make it out of here alive, Chukwudi sobbed, I'll never venture into anything like this again. This is madness. Nana's face set in determination. We'll get through this, guys. We have to. But as the storm raged on, it seemed increasingly unlikely that they would escape the hut alive. Nana and Chukwudi trembled with fear as they faced the old dwarf. His four legs and tail seemed to radiate an otherworldly energy, and his red eyes glowed with an eerie intensity. Who are you and what brings you to my hut? The old dwarf thundered, his voice like a crack of lightning. Nana stuttered, Um, my name is Nana, and this is Chukwudi. We came for... for the golden feather. The old dwarf's gaze narrowed, his eyes burning with a fierce inner light. You mean the same feather you tried to steal from me? The one you think will save your kingdom? Chukwudi protested. No, great one, we didn't mean to steal it. We only wanted... The old dwarf raised a hand, silencing Chukwudi. Enough. You want my golden feather, but do you know its true value? It's not just a trinket to save your kingdom. It's a powerful artifact, one that demands sacrifice. Nana pleaded, Please, great one, consider our quest. Many have died to get here. We'll do anything to save our people. The old dwarf's expression softened, and he nodded. Very well, I'll give you my golden feather, but on one condition, one of you must sacrifice themselves to prove your worth. Chukwudi and Nena gasped, horrified. What kind of condition is that? Chukwudi demanded. The old dwarf shrugged. It's the only way to prove your devotion. One of you must give their life for the greater good. Nana stepped forward, determination etched on his face. I'll do it. I'll sacrifice myself for our people. Chukwudi grasped his arm, tears streaming down his face. No, Nana, you can't. We need you. But Nana shook him off. I've made up my mind. I'll give my life for our kingdom. The old dwarf nodded, a hint of respect in his eyes. Very well, Nena. Your sacrifice will be remembered. Take my golden feather and may it bring salvation to your kingdom. As the old dwarf handed over the golden feather, a blinding light enveloped Nana and he vanished into thin air. The remaining friends gasped in shock, but the old dwarf simply nodded. I will remember your sacrifice, Nena. May your kingdom prosper. The old dwarf turned to Nana and Obiora. You can? Leave now. No danger will come your way as long as you carry the golden feather with you. Chukwudi nodded, still in shock, and turned to leave. As he emerged from the hut, he saw the golden feather glowing brightly in Nana's hand. Chukwudi set off back to Evani's kingdom, the golden feather leading the way. As he journeyed, he noticed that the forest seemed to be transforming around them. The trees grew taller and greener, and the air filled with the sweet scent of blooming flowers. And so he continued on their journey, the golden feather guiding him toward their kingdom and safety. Chukwudi finally arrived at their village, exhausted but triumphant, with the golden feather in hand. The villagers erupted in joy, with some overcome with emotion, wailing and rolling on the ground, mourning the loss of their loved ones who didn't return. Others rushed to spread the news of their hero's return. As he approached the palace, the king and his cabinets were deep in discussion, unaware of the duo's arrival. Elder Muba was absent, bedridden with illness. Chukwudi entered the palace, bowing before the king. Igwi, may you live long, your highness. I have returned with the golden feather. The king and his cabinets were overjoyed, but also shocked that the others didn't return. Where are the others who went with you to the forest? The king asked, his voice laced with concern. Chukwudi's expression turned somber. They didn't make it, your highness. They died in the forest. Only Obiora and I survived. The king and elders were stunned, and a collective gasp filled the room. Elder Okeki exclaimed, Chai! What a great loss! Just then, Emeka's mother, Olama, rushed in, frantic. What am I hearing? Where is my son? Chukwudi's eyes welled up with tears. I'm sorry, Mama. Emeka is dead. Olama collapsed to the ground, wailing and rolling in grief. The queen rushed to console her, while Oke's pregnant wife burst in, tears streaming down her face. 
As the palace erupted in a cacophony of grief and mourning, the priestess appeared, her presence a beacon of calm amidst the chaos. I have come to ensure the Golden Feather's power is harnessed for the greater good, she said, her voice soothing. Let us take a moment to honor the fallen and celebrate the bravery of Chukwudi. The king greeted the great priestess warmly. Great priestess, you are welcome. The men are back with the golden feather. The priestess smiled enigmatically. Yes, I know they are back. That's why I came. The king leaned forward eagerly. So, great priestess, what next? The priestess's voice was solemn. I will take the golden feather to Afamefula's grave to perform a ritual to appease his spirit and forgive the kingdom. The king's brow furrowed in concern. Great priestess, we don't know where we buried him. We've killed many strangers. We don't know which one is Afamefula. Please help us. The priestess closed her eyes, her hands raised to the sky. I sense the darkness, the pain, the suffering. I will take the golden feather. Elder Okeke trembled slightly. But great priestess, how will we know if Afamefala's spirit has forgiven us? The priestess's voice was firm. There will be darkness in the kingdom, and when it happens, know that he has forgiven your kingdom. Elder Anin's eyes were wide with fear. And what if there's no sign of darkness? The priestess's voice was stern. The kingdom will perish, and no one will exist anymore. Pray that Afamefula forgives your kingdom. The priestess strode forward, her robes billowing behind her. Enough talk. Let's go. The group followed her to the burial site, their faces somber and anxious. At the site, the king whispered, Great priestess, is this the place where we buried Aphamephala? The priestess nodded. Yes, this is the place. Now let the sacrifice begin. She raised her hand and a knife appeared. Suddenly a heavy wind blew and trees fell. A thunderstorm ensued, and everyone cowered in fear. The king's voice shook. Great priestess, what's going on? The priestess raised her hand, and the wind died down. I sense something coming. Wind, stop. The thunderstorm ceased, and the group breathed a sigh of relief. The priestess turned to the king and his cabinets. Stay calm. Let me figure this out. You are the key to forgiveness. As she turned to the golden feather, her hands shaking slightly, the priestess holds the golden feather aloft, and its radiant glow illuminates the darkening sky. She begins to chant in a voice that sends shivers down the spines of the onlookers. Afamaifula, son of Azuka, we summon thee. With this golden feather, we have come to appease thy spirit, grant us forgiveness, and let thy wrath subside. As she speaks, the wind picks up, and the trees creak ominously. The air grows thick with an otherworldly energy. Suddenly, Aphamaphala's ghost materializes before them, its presence both captivating and terrifying. The priestess stands tall, the golden feather still clutched in her hand. Aphamaphala, we have come to make amends. Will you forgive us and lift your curse? Aphamaphala's ghostly form towered over the priestess, his voice thundering with rage. Stop, don't even think about performing that ritual. If you do, I'll make sure you join them in death. The priestess stood firm, her eyes flashing with defiance. Aphamephala, son of Azuka, you're the one who's been blocking my rituals. You're the one who's been fueling your own vengeance with the blood of innocent people. Aphamephala's ghost snarled, his eyes blazing with fury. Yes, I am the one. And I won't rest until I've wiped out every last person in Ivani's village. They killed me before my time, and my mother died of heartbreak. I vowed to make them pay, and anyone who gets in my way will suffer the same fate. The priestess shook her head, her voice calm and soothing. Afamefula, you're consumed by your own anger and hatred. You're letting it destroy you. I'm here to help you find peace, to help you forgive and move on. Afamefula's ghost <laughs> let out a cold, mirthless laugh. Forgive? You think I can just forgive and forget? They haven't even begun to suffer, and already they're begging for mercy. I'll show them no mercy. I'll make them beg for death. Elder Akamo whispered to Elder Okeke, Who is the priestess talking to? Elder Okeke replied, I don't know, but she's mentioning Afamafula and our kingdom. The king asked the priestess, Who are you talking to? The priestess replied, Afamafula, the son of Azuka. He's angry with your kingdom, and he's vowed to destroy it. 
the king pleaded, Please, great priestess, beg him on our behalf. Tell him we're sorry for what we did to him. Aphamephala's ghost sneered, Sorry? They think a simple apology will suffice. They haven't seen anything yet. I'll show them the true meaning of pain and suffering. The priestess tried to reason with him, Aphamephala, please forgive them. You've already taken so much from them. What will you gain by destroying them completely? Aphamephala's ghost's expression turned even darker, his voice dripping with venom. You think I care about their suffering? They brought this upon themselves. They killed me, and now they'll pay the price. And as for you, priestess, you're just a foolish mortal trying to interfere with things you don't understand. You can't stop me, and you can't save them. I am the one who holds the power here. The priestess stood her ground, her eyes flashing with determination. I won't back down, Aphamephala. I won't let you continue this senseless slaughter. You're consumed by your own hatred and anger, and it's destroying you. I can help you find peace, but you have to let go of this vengeance. Aphamephala's ghost let out a cold, mirthless laugh. You think you can help me? You think you can save me? I am beyond saving, and even if I weren't, I wouldn't want your help. You're just a weak, foolish mortal. You don't know what it's like to be me, to feel my pain and my anger. You don't know what it's like to be consumed by vengeance. The priestess took a step forward, her voice softening. Aphamephala, I may not know what it's like to be you, but I do know what it's like to lose someone you love. I do know what it's like to feel pain and anger. And I do know what it's like to want revenge. But I also know that revenge won't bring you peace. It won't bring you closure. It will only consume you more and destroy everything in its path. Aphamephala's ghost's expression faltered for a moment, and the priestess saw a glimmer of uncertainty in his eyes. But then his face hardened again, and he snarled, You don't know anything about me. You don't know what I want or what I need. And you definitely don't know what it's like to be me. So just stay out of my way and let me finish what I started. Aphamephala's ghostly form towered over the priestess, his voice thundering with rage. No way. I can't forgive them. The king is not my father. He ceased to be my father the day he ordered the villagers to kill me. I will never rest until I accomplish my mission to wipe out the whole people of Ivani's village. And that's final. There's nothing you can do to stop my revenge. The priestess stood firm, her eyes flashing with determination. Afam, don't talk like that. No matter what, the king is still your father. You can't deny that. You have a good heart, just like your mother Azuka. Please consider the calamity and the people you've killed in Ivani village. Think of the men who died in the forest to get the golden feather to appease your spirit. Forgive them, Afam. Aphamephala's ghost snarled, No, I can't and will never forgive them. The priestess pleaded, You can, Afam. Forget about everything they did to you. They've realized their mistake. Find a place in your heart to forgive them. They're very sorry. As the priestess spoke, the king, his cabinets, Chukwula and the other elders knelt down, pleading for forgiveness. Aphamephala's ghost saw them, and tears dropped from his eyes. With that, he disappeared. The priestess said, You all should get up. He's gone. The king asked, Has he forgiven us? The priestess replied, I don't know yet. First, I will perform the ritual with the golden feather. That will tell if he has forgiven your kingdom. She took the golden feather and started chanting, performing the ritual. Heavy rain began to fall, and the king exclaimed, is this a sign of his forgiveness? The priestess said, No, it's not. The sign of Aphamiphala's forgiveness is darkness. Elder Akamo asked, But what if darkness doesn't come? The priestess replied, Then consider your kingdom doomed. Let's wait and see if darkness will come. They waited, but darkness didn't come. The priestess said, We've waited long enough. Apham hasn't forgiven your kingdom. I'll return to my cave and consult the great goddess to see if there's another alternative to appease Afam's spirit. As they turned to leave Afam's grave, a heavy thunderbolt struck, followed by rain. Then, darkness covered the kingdom, and the priestess smiled for the first time. Finally, it is done. Afam has forgiven your kingdom. You are now free, she exclaimed. The king and others jumped up, embracing each other in joy. Elder Akumo thanked the priestess, and the king promised to visit her cave to show appreciation. 
the priestess smiled and disappeared, leaving the king and others to return home excitedly. As the days passed, Ivani's village transformed before everyone's eyes. The sick recovered, and the multiple boils on Elder Embar's body disappeared. He rose to his feet, and the villagers rejoiced, singing and dancing in celebration of their kingdom's restoration. Nana's father, who had been blind, regained his sight, but his joy was bittersweet. He couldn't stop crying for his son, who had sacrificed himself for the kingdom. His wife and Keichi tried to comfort him, but he couldn't shake off the grief. Three days later, the king summoned Nana's father and Chukwuka, rewarding them handsomely for risking their lives to bring the golden feather. However, Nana's father couldn't find happiness in the reward, as his son was not there to share it with him. The king also visited the families of those who had lost loved ones in the forest, compensating them with a large sum of money and promising to remember their loved ones in the village. He kept his word, and the villagers never forgot the sacrifices made for their kingdom. A year later, the queen gave birth to a baby boy, and the king named him Afame Fula. Nana's father sat outside, staring at the sky, still grieving for his son. My son Nana, I wish you were here. I miss you. Remember, you told me you would be back. You promised me. Please, my son, I know you will come back to me. Just then, he heard a voice behind him. Papa. He turned and saw Nana standing there, alive and well. Overjoyed, he exclaimed, You are alive. Praise the gods. How is this possible? I thought I lost you. Nana smiled and explained, Papa, a lot happened. After I vanished from the hut, I found myself in a place where I could see the dead and the afterlife. But while I was about to step into the land of the dead, something pulled me back. A voice told me that my father needs me, that it isn't my time, and that my spirit is pure. And then I woke up back in the hut and returned home. Nana's father was amazed and grateful. My son, I can't believe it. You're alive. I thought I had lost you forever. Nana nodded. I know, Papa, but I'm back now, and I have a story to tell. Nana's father listened intently as Nana explained everything that had happened to him. He told him about the ritual, the golden feather, and how he had been brought back to life. As Nana finished his story, his father embraced him tightly. My son, I'm so grateful to have you back. I can't thank the gods enough. Nana smiled and hugged his father back. I'm grateful too, Papa. I'm home now, and I'm not going anywhere. And so Nana and his father reunited, grateful for a second chance at life and each other's company. Nana's father was overjoyed, thanking the gods for bringing his son back to him. Nana later got married to a beautiful maiden named Ogechi, and they had a son together. Chukwuka also got married, and the village continued to thrive. The king abolished the tradition of killing strangers and welcomed outsiders, bringing peace to Ivani's village once again. The villagers lived happily ever after, never forgetting the sacrifices made by Nana and the others who had risked their lives to save their kingdom. Thank you very much for watching to the very end. We trust that you love the story. We will also love to hear from you. Please kindly drop your comments and suggestions in the comment section. Don't forget to like and share. In case you are new here, kindly subscribe to our channel and turn on your notifications. You can also support us by joining our membership community. Your love and support will go a long way in helping us make more interesting videos just for you and enable us to help a few people in our community who have financial needs. Stay positive and don't give up on your dreams. It will surely come to pass. Thank you and see you in our next video.